Hello world and welcome back to another mechanism tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be covering all over the induction matrix, how to build it, how to upgrade it and what it can actually give us in terms of power. As always if this video helps you out in any way shape or form please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe it really helps me out and ring the bell button for more tutorials in the future. So first to make the induction matrix we are going to need some induction casings. This is going to require a lot of steel, all of it's going to require a lot of steel and that's also going to require one of these energy tablets inside the crafting table. You'll get four induction casings per craft here moving on you're going to need a way to actually input some power and also take it out this is where you're going to need these induction ports for these you're going to need four induction casings around the side and then one elite control circuit in the center you actually get two of these per craft which is very handy as you can tell with the elite circuits this is pretty of a late tier item something a little bit more advanced now as well as the induction casing and the induction ports you can also use structural glass in order to make your induction matrix and that will actually fully form your induction matrix in its in total if you right click on it it will give you a GUI however it won't actually be able to store or transfer any power in and out of it even if you use these induction ports for that you're going to need two more items the first one is going to be these induction cells now these induction shells they come in four different tiers they go from basic advanced elite and ultra just like every other thing and each one needs to use the previous tier in order to make the next so let's go over how to make that for the basic induction cell you're going to need the one basic energy cube four energy tablets and then four lithium dust on the corners now we are going to cover how to get this lithium in a little bit later now the basic induction cell just one of them gives you 3.2 gfe in storage that's quite a lot of storage just in one block that's already a heck of a lot better if you just look at this here this only stores one M mfe just throwing a little bit extra around it makes it a lot better now you only get one of these per craft as it is such a uh, big thing this is so you only get one of these per craft but you really start noting the difference when you start upgrading things so moving on to the advanced, the advanced is going to require the previous tier. So you're going to need four basic induction cells, then you're actually going to need the advanced energy cube and four more of these power cells, item tablets, energy tablets, sorry, on the corners. And this is again only going to give us one induction cell and this actually stores 25.6 GFE, which is a massive increase in fact even just if you made four of these and had four of these in your induction matrix itself it still wouldn't add up to the 25 so definitely is worth once you have four of these just make it straight into the advanced induction for almost no extra cost next we have the elite tier the elite induction matrix again this is going to require four of your advanced induction cells and then one elite energy cube and four more energy tablets this will only give you one when you craft but it gives you 204.8 gfe per single induction cell that is absolutely an increasing increase from just level advanced all the way up to level elite and finally this is the ultimate induction cell this is going to require four of your elite tier induction cells one ultimate energy cell and four energy tablets just like before you only get one of these of course and this will give you 1.6 tfe which is essentially 1600 gfe of storage that is absolutely insane so you're gonna have to make see you would you would need i believe you would need four stacks of these basic energy cells in actually order to make one of these ultimate induction cells so it is still quite a big jump but if you just do it slowly over the time of your game i mean you probably could rush it to be honest but uh eventually you'll get there now you don't have to have just one of these inside or any one of these inside of your induction matrix. You can only have one, you could have a lot more. It depends on the size of your induction matrix. We'll cover that more shortly. The next thing you're going to need are induction providers. We've talked about storage. The providers is your transfer rate. This is how much energy you can put in and pull out of your induction matrix starting with the basic induction provider the basic induction provider and all of the others they're very very similar to the cells uh, they are going to require the previous tiers and also some energy cubes but this time instead of using your energy tablets you're just going to be using circuits so it's a little bit cheaper to actually make these so the first one we're going to need four basic control circuits four lithium dust and one energy cube now this only gives us one craft and this gives us a transfer rate of 102.4 kfe per tick so it's about 102,000 fe per tick moving on we have the advanced 
induction provider. This is going to require four advanced control circuits in the corner, an advanced energy cube in the center, and four of the basic induction providers in the middle here. This is only given to give us one at a time. And this is a transfer eight rate of 819.2 KFE per tick. So 819,000 that is per tick I believe. Moving on from that we have the elite induction provider. This is going to require four of the advanced induction providers, four of the elite control circuits and the elite cube here and once that is crafted you'll be able to transfer 6.55 MFE per tick. And it's absolutely crazy compared to the previous tier. Definitely one of the bigger jumps when it comes to this. And lastly, we have the ultimate induction provider. This is going to require the ultimate energy cube, four of the elite tier induction providers, and then four of the ultimate control cubes. You only get one of these per craft, and this will actually displace 52.42 mfe per tick so this is actually quite the largest bearing in mind the largest cell can hold 1.6 tier fee and this can only transfer 5.2 sorry 52.42 mfe it's a little bit smaller in my opinion but still a hell of a lot of power to transfer especially since you probably don't even have enough machines to actually do all this and if you have massive massive arrays so that is everything you could and should possibly need for the actual induction matrix itself but before we actually go into building this structure let's go into how you actually make this lithium dust so that is going to be using some processes that we've used before but some new as well so let's go back to this thermo evaporation chamber we covered these a little while ago when we were going into quadrupling our ores i'll leave a link to that in the description and the card up in the corner here and we are going to be using two of these thermo evaporation chambers now before we used water to make brine and that is actually what we are doing here inside of this thermo evaporation chamber we're using water to make brine here we're using the advanced tower here as we have got our solar panels on the top here but you don't have to do this of course but if you want to know more check out that video so we're obviously just pumping water in here to make our brine but this time what we're doing is we're actually pumping our brine into another thermo evaporation block and what this is doing is turning our brine into liquid lithium so this is where you're actually just going to need two of them this is the only process that you need to really worry about now is just getting a second one of these thermo evaporation chambers if you're already quadrupling your ores you probably already have excess of brine anyway so once you throw up another one of these you can start making lithium but then from lithium you're going to need two different blocks one is the rotary condensator which what we're going to have to do is condense our lithium into a gaseous form that's all we're doing here so I believe this is actually the default way when you go in here but if it isn't just click this this button here and it will change it around to the other way but yes we want the liquid lithium to turn into regular lithium then we're going to use another machine this machine is called the chemical crystallizer it's going to be a brand new one we haven't seen before it's created using four refined obsidian ingots uh, two ultimate control circuits some of these fluorite items ores I don't know what you would call them and one steel casing and that will give us our chemical crystallizer now inside of here all we're doing is turning our lithium into a dust very very simple here so it's not a major to get this lithium dust so it's not really early you could start doing the induction matrix but obviously as you can see since most of it requires the elite tier to start off with you could get this fairly early on so actually creating these little induction matrices here i have two right here one is using the basics and one is using the ultimate as you can see they are both exactly the same size the only thing that i've changed inside is the tier of the cell and provider now these two here they are actually the smallest you can possibly make it as each induction matrix has to have two of these inside so if we just did a three by three by three we could store energy but we couldn't actually send it out of here if we just had the cell inside so you could actually make this three by three by three but it wouldn't really be functioning you could only put power in and not actually take it out again which is a little bit confusing so it has to be three by three by four so you can actually fit both the provider and and the cell inside so if you right click in here we'll see a couple of things on the left here is our power supply once this is fully filled up you know you have your obviously your capacity of 3.2 gfe it shows inside how much energy it currently has at the top here obviously at the moment it is zero and then you have also how much is being input and how much is being output so it will actually be able to tell you whether you're going to be gaining power or losing power from these two metrics here then on this side we also have two spots this is for maybe using an energy tablet or charging up a power tool 
if you put something in the slot top slot here it will start charging up uh sorry in the bottom here it will start charging up and if you wanted to just charge it you would put it at the top clicking at the matrix statistics it says here on the side it also tells you your input and output it's almost like a little mini bit here it tells you exactly how much you're receiving and outputting and then also how much power it is it tells you the dimensions and how much what you've actually got inside at the moment we've got one cell and one provider as you can see here and we have a transfer rate of both in and out of 102.4 kfe as that is we are using the only basic one of these induction providers but as you can see this thing as it's being so small it's crazy to think how much power you actually get in this 3.2 gfe is actually still better than the ultimate energy cube the ultimate energy cube only holds 102.4 mfe yes it's easier to actually get to the ultimate cube rather than this induction casing but if you started really really early on and got one of these induction casings right away this is quite a lot of power for when you're first starting off considering it doesn't really take too much once you get elite tier and lithium you're on the home stretch here but how about we actually look inside of here as you can see the only difference is we have got the upgraded providers and cells inside it tells you our power all everything is the exact same and it tells us see it's the exact same size and it tells us what we actually have inside of here our transfer rate but what's the biggest you can actually make one of these things well the biggest is actually 18 by 18 by 18 that is what we have here but as you can see it's still only got those basic providers inside of here this massive structure right here is the exact same power consumption and storage as this tiny little thing here the structure is literally all as it says the structure is the structure it doesn't do anything else you can make it as big as you want or as you small as you want as long as it's rectangular in shape this is a a full proper cube but you could make this three by three by 18 and make it really tall if you wanted to you could make it really long and skinny it doesn't really matter or you can make it how i made it before where i made it really long but flat uh, but as long as it's cuboid in some way you're good you can't make it a little bit more diagonal or something like that very similar to when we we're using the fission reactor inside of here as you can see it's the exact same as inside but just to demonstrate also if i just took out each of these two blocks here and then put the glass back you can see that it did actually form it told us everything but it can't actually hold anything as you can see our bars are actually full but as you can see 18 by 18 by 18 so let's go and put these back inside and let's actually see just how much we can actually fill up so i'm going to go ahead and fill this up all with basic cells and we'll just throw in a couple of providers as well so i have gone ahead and filled up everything inside here so what we have here is that every single layer is filled up with cells except the top layer is completely full of provided just to give us a little bit of a little bit of a faster feed so inside of here we can now see that we have a maximum of one 2.28 tfe in total that's a heck of a lot of power in there and we can transfer 26.21 mfe per tick as you can see we are using 3840 cells and 256 providers that is a heck of a lot but something you may notice even though we have all these cells it's still not the best that much better than it is with one of these now inside of here we are actually transferring more inside of this with just one ultimate cell than we are with one of with a full row of these providers up here however we are making a lot more of the power storage there is going to be a there's obviously nearly 12 times more power storage inside of this one block but if you really think about it since it takes about 256 of these cells to actually make one of these ultimates there's actually more cells inside of here than it actually would take to make four of these ultimate bad boys so it's still a little bit inexpensive to do something like this it certainly looks cool one day you may need this amount of power but I, I really really highly doubt it but how about we go to the extremes now let's see how much power this will actually take if we started doing it with the ultimate energy cells and providers so here we are this is nearly the best possible storage you could get inside of mechanism this is just it's the exact same we've got ultimate providers on the top and then we have everything else being cells obviously you could do just to have one provider in here if you wanted to and have everything else be cells to get even more if you wanted to but we'll just keep it the same for argument's sake so inside of here we can hold 6.1 
PFE. Now I don't know if this is just one higher than T, it might be two higher than T, I have got no idea how much PFE actually is, but we have a transfer rate of 13.42 GFE, which doesn't seem like a lot in comparison considering we're holding P inside of here. As you can see it's the same 3840 cells and 256 providers, which is absolutely insane, but this is pretty much the best you could probably get inside of here. Now there's only one more thing that I would like to say when it comes to the induction matrix is that inside of here they do not all have to be the exact same things. I could have some basic and induction providers in here as well and it would still actually craft. That is perfectly fine. You don't have to have all the same tier. You can do whatever tier you want. You can slowly build it up over time one block day after day. As well as that is that when you actually put more blocks in here there is no sort of multiplication. It's all straight away addition so since we know that these provide ourselves 100 sorry this if we know these provide us 3.2 gfe if we had two of these inductions inside we know we'd get 6.4 it's straight mod addition everything is just added and added and added if you add one more it that amount gets added to it there's no sort of multiplier on here so the more you have one type you'll get that slight bonus there's nothing like that it simply is what it is and one last thing is using the configurator, you can set your induction port to be input or output. That is the last thing and it's probably very important to actually know when it comes to the induction matrix. Now, unfortunately, that is everything that I have to show you when it comes to the induction matrix. Slightly shorter it is today, but this is probably one of the best plays you can actually store power both inside a mechanism and any other mod, to be honest. So, if you did like or this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please could you leave a like and subscribe, it really helps me out. And ring the bell button for more mechanism tutorials in the future, as now we're going to have to go and wait and actually filling this induction matrix. Now we have so much power, and for that, I think we're going to need the fusion reactor. But until next time, guys. Take care.